Hi everyone and welcome back to another mixed media project. Last week I shared a video on how you can create a shadow box from a pattern paper. And again today I'm playing with pattern paper. I have the Stamperia Alchemy collection here. This is the 12 by 12 pad. And I'm going to share a new shadow box again using the pattern paper. You can see lovely background papers here as well as papers with focal points. You will find tags and elements that you can cut out. These projects are really easy when you are a beginner in mixed media. You combine very basic mixed media techniques while getting inspiration from the beautiful paper pads. Now from my project I got inspired from uh, the beautiful owl and you can see a couple of owls here on a branch as well as this big one. That's the one that I'm going to use today. And since I have the whole collection here, I will quickly go through some of the products. So for example, you will find many stencils, lovely stencils. I will be using a couple of those for today. This is the gray board. It has already cut out elements that you can pop out and stick one on top of the other to create three dimensional elements. Then if you're not a fan of fuzzy cutting, there are many different products from Stamperia for this collection that you can just pop out. These can be the die cuts. These are acetate die cuts. I'm going to take some out of the packaging so you can see. They are very thin, however, they are shiny. And there are all kinds of elements that you can play with, perfect for cars as well as for mixed media. And then you see there are also wooden shapes as well as chipboard shapes that you can just pop out and stick on your projects. Another fun product that Stamperia has in most of their collections are their clear prints. This is printed acetate, it is quite thick, some of them are semi-transparent while others are completely transparent as you will see. And I would say that these are perfect for creating covers if you are making your very own art journals or even albums. In any case, for my project today, I will be working mainly with the paper pad. However, I did show you really quickly some of the products from this collection to have an idea of what is available. So for today, I'm working on one of those wooden panels. I get those from Arteza in a pack of five. You will find links below. And I'm starting with two pattern papers that I picked from the 8x8 paper pad. You can do the exact same thing if you just grab those exact papers from the 12x12. It really depends on how large you want those designs to be. So I already have a very interesting background. However, I want to play a little bit on top of it with my mediums. So I'm starting out with vintage patina and that's uh, oxide ink. I know that oxides work beautifully on top of dark pattern papers. So now I have some lighter areas on my background. And now let's play with stencils. I'm using this alchemy stencil from the same collection and I will go with glamour paste. Glamour paste is a paste from uh, Stamperia. It is nice and thick and really easy to play with. It really holds its shape. Plus it is super shiny. I believe it includes very fine glitter inside. I pick up just a touch of paste with the back of my spatula, a little goes a long way here. The color I used here is black silver, but you will be able to find lots and lots of colors in the market. Here is another stencil from this collection, many different patterns in this one, it includes so many different options. I'm going to lay the circles over the circles that I do have already on my background. And I'm going again over it with glamour paste, this time I used gold. One thing that I love about the packaging of the glamour paste is that it has a second lid. Don't throw it away, it really makes a difference. This is not going to dry on you really quickly, as it happens with other pastes. I do have those open for over a year and you can see they work beautifully. So here you can see I put the plastic lid on, making sure that it makes a good contact and then I use the top lid. And now I'm going to go ahead and use another color, this time a bluish one, this is turquoise. And again, for this step, I'm using the same stencil as I did for the circles. However, I'm using a different part, the, the area where you can see all those numbers. And you see, I don't go for the perfect impression there. I just scrape off whatever is left at the back of my spatula. 
This paste dries quite quickly. Of course, it depends on how thick you apply it. The best thing that you need to do is to leave it aside to dry, to air dry. However, I'm very impatient with paste and I just had to use my heat can. But don't apply too much heat if you don't want that to bubble up on you. Unless this is an effect that you are after. Now again, I'm using Vintage Patina, which is the spray that I used in the beginning and I'm adding some splashes. And I will leave this aside to completely dry. From the same collection, here is another paper pad full of numbers. I'm going to cut off a few of them. At this stage, I didn't know how many I'm going to use, so I did cut out enough to have plenty. And I'm getting rid of that white edge just by using a marker all around the edges. And now it's time to do some recycling. This is just a flap from one of the boxes that I get my products. And I'm going to add a little square on the back of all those numbers. You can definitely go ahead and do that with your uh, foam tape if you like. And now I'm going to use these numbers to embellish my background and make it look more interesting. I decided to use these numbers on the edges, but if you like, you can definitely go ahead and stick them anywhere you like on the background. Also, I'm not going to create a complete frame with numbers all around the edges. However, this is definitely an option. For my focal point, I decided to go with this owl. I'm going to use my scissors and fuzzy cut around here. And I chose to go with the owl that is included in the 12 by 12 paper pad, just because it is quite big. There is the option to get this owl on a chipboard, thick chipboard sticker. So instead of having to fuzzy cut her, you can just use her as she is. Plus it is going to be quite thick. However, I did promise that I'm going to show you examples of creating shadow boxes from pattern papers. And that's what I'm going for. If you browse through the pattern paper, you can find elements to combine your owl with. For example, you can use that window. Or you can have her standing on top of this globe. I'm just showing you different options and really the possibilities are endless. But for my project today I'm going with this scrap piece of paper from cutting out the background and I'm just creating a branch here. I'm using my scissors for that. If you do have a tie that cuts out a branch, I do have branches and if you do have my very own dies that I designed for spellbinders in one of the bird houses you will find a beautiful branch. I decided not to use it however for today's project. Since I wanted to show you that you really don't need so many products you can always cut out a branch with your scissors. So here I'm just gluing two little branches together to make a whole piece. This is quite dark. And I need to make sure that it's going to stand out against the background. Now on the right side of my background, I did spray with vintage photos. So you see, it is really visible, the branch there. However, on the other side, it's not. That's why I'm going to spray a little bit. So I'm going to let that uh, part dry. In the meantime, I'm inking up the branch with a black suit. Just a touch of black at the bottom. And you will see that with those touches, the branch now really stands out against the background. From this pattern paper, I'm going to cut out a few leaves. You can either use your scissors to create your leaves like so, or you can definitely use a die if you have one. I'm going to stick the leaves to decorate my branch. And by the way, I did use dimension for the branch as well as for the owl. And you can definitely go either with uh, recycling your cardboard or you can use foam tape at the back. Also notice that for the leaves, I didn't go with green. I chose to go with one of the pattern papers for the leaves to make sure that everything is going to come together beautifully since they come from the same collection. Now I'm going to work on the wooden panel and prepare it. For that I'm using a black acrylic paint and I'm covering up the sides both on the outside as well as on the inside. And once the black acrylic paint is completely dry I can stick inside my project. For that I'm going with white glue and I'm making sure that I have glue all the way to the edge. By the way, here is your reminder, if you do enjoy my videos, don't forget to click the like button as well as leave me a comment. 
Always remember that these are just a few easy steps that you can do to support any YouTube channel that you like. If you want, you can use pattern paper like so to cover up the inside or the frame. I decided not to, but it is definitely an option. Now another optional thing is to add some highlights. I'm using my white gel pen. First I'm going to add a couple of highlights on the owl's eyes. It really brings her to life. And also I'm going to add highlights on all the cutouts, the numbers, the brands, the leaves, everywhere. Now, as always, I did want to add a motivational quote and I decided to go with don't count the days, make the days count. For the word count, I'm going to spell it by using black cutout letters. While for the rest of my quote, I'm just using my label maker. You can definitely use your printer. I also didn't want those labels to be super bright white, so I did go over them with a little bit of vintage photo and I'm sticking everything down. I used my white gel pen to add some highlights on the word count and I did outline the rest of the quote with black marker. And finally I'm going to add some white splashes. I did cover up the head of my owl as I didn't want to have any weird splashes on top of her eyes. And at this stage I didn't realize that I need to add one more little sticker label to finish off my quote, which I am going to do. And you can see that in the finished photos. Also notice I did let the white splashes to go over the frame as well. This is optional. If you don't like that messy look, you can definitely avoid it. Here are some close-up photos on the finished project where you can see the details better. Don't forget, just like always, you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used down below in the description area. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.